Hello and welcome to the seventh episode of the Taped Vibes tutorial series. My name is Sebastian and in this episode I will walk through the final macro page design of the instrument. So let's go. Here in Halion I opened the first preset of the VST sound called a soulful vibe and I'm heading over to the macro page designer extended. In here, as you can see, is the program tree represented and I will head over to the taped vibes layer, which is holding the layer preset. And from here on, I see the whole macro page design. I can also switch in the final macro page design down here. That's what we are talking about right now. And that's what we are having a closer look at. As the instrument is designed in various parts, I will start with the top left one, the character section. And the first element um, is the title text. So the title character. You can also put this title in your SVG or PNG background, but during design I wanted to be very flexible in positioning and maybe changing fonts, sizes and colors. I highly recommend to go with the text element inside of Halion. To keep all titles the same, I created the title font resource that I refer to. So um, in my resources in here, there is the title font resource and it uh, is actually a custom font that is linked over here in the VST sound. So changing the font size, um, style, etc. on this resource will automatically change all other places where this title font resource is used as well. The second element in this character section is this little character bypass switch. So it enables or disables the section. So it refers to the value character bypass, which is actually um, a script parameter. As we, if we go to the taped vibe script, we see the script parameter character bypass and this one has been connected to the value of the character bypass switch. So in the script, it enables or bypasses the tremolo effect, which is in this case used to create the vibrato effect, and the clipper, which is used for creating the one knob distortion inside of taped vibes. So next is a disable group called character and it contains both knobs, so the tremolo and the distortion knob. Okay, I call it vibrato, so tremolo in here is maybe the wrong name, but um, you know what I'm referring to. And it's basically based on the tremolo effect, so it's all good. And the disable group has the same value as the switch, so the script value. So when the switch is on, the disable group shows the vibrato and distortion knob and make them usable. If it's inactive, the knob gets disabled. So we can test this in the final design in here. So if it's disabled, those both knobs are not accessible anymore. And if enabled, I can have access on these values. Speaking again of the switch, I will show you the template. With right click and edit, either on the macro page view or here in the tree, um, you can get to the control and you can edit this template furthermore. This one is a quite simple one as it only holds the switch um, and it's holding different SVGs for the on, the off and the hover states. So you have control over off, the off down state, the off hover, on, on down and on hover. And as you can see here, I didn't choose different SVGs for the off and the off down state as well as for the on and the on down state. So I assigned the off and the on SVG for both of these states. The only difference is the hover state. So the switch in total gets a little brighter in color as we are hovering over by mouse. And this happens um, in both cases. So if the switch is on and also if the switch is off, this little, little circle in the middle gets a little brighter. I will also quickly go to one of the knobs as all of the knobs are the same. Um, this template is a little bit more complex. It holds a variable, which is representing the hover state. And then there is a stack in it, uh, which has a label and a text font. And the stack is referring to the value on hover. So if you hover over a knob with your mouse, the text down here, which is actually just holding the parameter name, gives you the value of the parameter. And if you leave the hover zone, then you will get the name again. And this stack holds these both things. And the switch on the bottom is holding the frame where this at hover shall take place. So it's an invisible switch, so to speak, over the whole knob, which is giving back the hover value and saying this hover 
shall the stack show the label or the text. And in the middle of this template, there is the knob itself, and it's referring to knob 5 bitmap, which is an SVG as well. So if I go to my resources, and in this case it's in vector controls and knobs, there is the knob 5, and this is the SVG knob that I'm referring to in this template. This SVG knob actually comes out of this vector control uh, library that comes with every Halen installation. So if you want to start your macro page on your own, you'll have these knobs as well and you can use them of course. So um, in this case there are various switches, but if I go back to knobs, I see various knobs on here and um, it's actually the SVG knob 5, so it's this one. Um, I took this one and changed it a little. I will just quickly throw it next to the original knob so that you can see the difference how I treated the knob. So it's a little different in scale, of course, and the colors differ. The colored version of the Corona is a little thicker in overall thickness, and I changed the fonts for this knob as well. So there are subtle minor changes just to match it my overall design. So going back to the knob 5, you see the different um, IDs and the parts of the knob. So the, the different layers the knob is made from. And as you can see, the outer line uh, is referring to the color resource bright. Um, the corona is referring to the color resource red. And as I designed the instrument, I, I was not quite sure how this kind of reddish color should look like. Um, so I designed the color resource and I'm now totally free to change these colors uh, with just one click of changing the color resource as well. So this is where it comes really, really handy to work with color resources and with SVGs because you're getting super flexibility uh, when designing knobs or different controls and you want to match those over the whole macro page design. So I reverted all my experiments in here. Uh, you can do them on your own. And let's continue with the next section, which is the tape in the middle. And the next element um, after these character uh, knobs and the disable group is the random button. And the random button is an invisible switch as well. So it's a little switch in this middle screw here. You don't get any user interaction, so no hover state, nothing. But you have this invisible switch and if you click on here, uh, you will chase this random function, which is this random in the script that I showed in the script walkthrough tutorial as well. So this function gets called if you press on this little screw and this is done by this little switch in here. Next up in row is the cassette. And um, if I go to the resources tab and let's look for the cassette. So this is the whole cassette. I made an SVG out of it. And the middle part of this cassette, this black part in here is actually fully transparent. So elements below this in the hierarchy will be rendered. And that's why the cassette graphics is so high in total hierarchy. And below the cassette, there is the stack holding the three different icons. So the check, the cassette reels and the preamp. And depending on the state of the stack, which is referring to the value sound selection, which is a script parameter. And this um, is actually holding the three different reamped versions that are available for taped vibes. So if the DI is chosen, you will get the DI icon. And uh, if tape is chosen, you will get the tape icon and so on and so forth. So on the right side, there is also a drop down menu holding the sound selection and showing the name of the sound version of the tape vibes. But let's have a quick look to the last graphical element of the middle section. There is a DI or tape switch. It's almost an invisible switch and it changes the sound source or the sound selection by clicking on it. Well, it's almost invisible because by hovering over, you see a little color change in the background. And this is caused by the switch, only having this hover state assigned. When you hover over this element switch, it triggers a decor. And a decor is the simplest form of uh, SVG in Halion. So if you look in our resources and we go to this hover, you see that there is a simple rectangle defined with a solid fill with no radius and no line width in, in a dedicated size. And it holds up these colors. And this is actually giving you this horror state. Now, looking at the top right part of the instrument in more close detail, I will scroll over here as well. You can see the text and the selection menu. 
The selection menu is a very simple one from the vector controls as well, so you'll find this in this library. Um, but I modified the colors of the background and this little uh, selection triangle as well that matches the overall design. The value of the menu is also referring to the sound selection parameter in script. And in case of the switch, so this little switch in the middle, the DI or tape switch, it iterates through this whole items list and sending and receiving this numbered state, so to say. And in case of the menu, it's handing over the string. And that's why the define parameter in script is holding the string as well, so that you as a user can see the string value in this menu and not a number from one to three or from zero to two. Below there, there's the pedal noise knob and the release knob, but with a little round checkbox used as a simple switch on top left. And this one is again a little special. So when the switch is on, you can change the level of the recorded release samples and so have a little control of the mechanical release sounds. If the switch is off, you can change the envelope release behavior and the envelope release length, which also deactivates the recorded release samples. And that's why the value of the switch leads also to a script parameter uh, that's called a function and changes its behavior. Graphic-wise, the release part in here, so the two knobs are also in a stack and the stack um, gets this value of the switch or this checkbox as well. Either it shows the release level or the release length. Now let's head over to the delay section. Same as with the other sections, there is a bypass switch on top and the bypass also triggers the disable group, either making delay parameters controllable or not. So this is the actual switch and it refers to the multi-delay bypass, which you will find in the tape vibes FX multi-delay bypass. There are two menus, um, one changing the delay sub-presets uh, with the value leading to the script parameter and the script is in this case holding the delay presets. And the second one is either holding the delay sync notes when using musical notes for the delay or if the switch is deactivated you'll get a slider for dialing in the delay in milliseconds. So this is realized by also a simple stack, as you can see here. So depending on the stack's state, either musical notes or milliseconds are available. I created also a group for the musical notes so that I have one element in the stack. So in this total stack, I have either delay time or delay sync notes. And uh, this is actually a group holding the sync note selection and the label down there. I could have made this a template as well with the menu and the label in it, but it only appears once in this macro page. Um, and that's why I simply combined it by using this little group. Below there, there's the feedback and the mix slider. And the slider is also based on a vector slider you will find in the resource tab as well. I won't show the resource in detail, but as you can imagine, I treated the slider like the knob, so I changed the colors and the stroke width, etc., um, to match it with the overall design. And of course, I used the custom font as with the knobs as well. The modulation section doesn't need any further explanation in this graphic context as it's a simply copy and paste of already used controls. We have the bypass switch, the title text, I have a simple menu for selecting the sub presets and three different knobs going to the effects mix parameters. With the reverb section, there is one last new element in use and it's actually this early reflections tail slider, which is a bipolar instead of an unipolar slider. So the color of the slider is following the handle from the middle into both directions. And most of the controls in the vector controls library in here, they have unipolar and bipolar options for sliders and knobs. So I treated the bipolar slider like I did the unipolar so it matches. When I start a design from scratch and I don't know which direction it goes, I always create both versions of knobs and sliders so that I can simply switch the template if the control needs a bipolar knob or vice versa. The last element in the tree down here is the background. So it contains the various background elements of the macro page, starting from bottom to top. So the background color resource is um, on bottom. Then comes this frame, which is this outline part in here with some rounded edges. And then there is this darker trapeze in here so that the whole thing is outlining some kind of a cassette. So the small cassette in the large cassette. 
And then I have designed a tape deck background, which is the background part behind this little cassette and uh, also beneath these icons on top, so that the color of the inside this cassette is not having the same background color as the whole interface. And then there is a, a thing that is called logo overlay. And uh, as you can see, this is a rectangle which is overlaying this outside frame so that um, the Steinberg logo is not hidden by this outline frame. That's why I designed a little rectangle decor having the same background color as the whole background and overlaying this little outline. And then on top, there is the Steinberg logo over it in this little frame. All of this could have been merged together as one SVG or PNG as well. But during design, I started fully in Halion and only designed the necessary icons in other software. And that makes it also fully transparent for you and also shows you how far you can get with designing your UIs completely in Halion. So that's all I wanted to show you about this Taped Vibes macro page. I hope this episode helped you getting more into the depths of Halion. And at this point, I really invite you to open up this macro page and play around with the various elements, design a different knob, change the colors or redesign the macro page completely. The next and the last episode of the series will cover the library creator and I will show you how you can pack everything into one VST sound. So thanks for following along and see you in the next one. Bye.